Gaming and Esports Hot Topics, Hot Tweets, and Spiciest Memes. I'm Marissa Roberto. And I'm Lisa Duan, and this is how the show's going to work. We're going to present all the goodies we've gathered in which we will let's discuss and most likely argue. But luckily for all of us, there is a mute button that we can each use only one time if we want the other person to shut up. Uh-huh, but shout out to chat because we like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. Emphasis on the praise people. I like it. Our top story is the drama that never seems to end. Tifu versus FaZe. Yesterday was a busy day for both sides of this drama. First, Tifu's contract was allegedly leaked by The Blaze. Then, FaZe Clan alleged that the real reason behind Tifu's lawsuit was that he wanted to form his own esports org. Tifu's brother seemingly confirmed it to Keemstar, stating that his brother wanted to change the face of gaming with his own org. Lisa, this is true. Is Tifu is starting his own organization. Mm -hmm. Do you think that does this change your opinion at all about this feud? Is he being deceitful by saying it was a contract thing and and this is just about the esports community? Like, what exactly are your thoughts here? Uh, of course, this is all so muddled. Whose side are we each on? Mm. I was kind of more on the neutral side, as everyone likes to think they are. Uh, this doesn't really change anything. The mm. fact of what he wants to do with it, you know, I'm sure he has a lot of. Um, you know, intentions behind mm -hmm. wanting his own contract terminated. Yeah. And so this, doing this whole thing, we're like, I want to change the face of gaming, whatever, I don't care. Actually, I saw on social, I think it was Hamlin's on TSM, he posted the perfect reaction to this whole situation. Oh. Um, if we can show it at some point, maybe on socials, we'll retweet it or something, yeah. but like, he literally was like, no, this is what I think about the whole TV situation. He pressed play, and then a song came on, he was like, I don't give up. Yeah, I don't give up. Yeah. That's literally me right now. Like, I don't freaking care. FaZe released the contract. Yes, it's unfair, but that's what happens when you're signing a new nobody, basically, at the time. At this point, let's just let it go. I think we're all done here. Are we over this? Okay, where my fire comes from, oh. where I get upset, is all of the finger pointing and all the people taking sides. Yes, you're right. This is none of our business, but they made it all of our business by putting it on Twitter and airing all this out and making people take sides. That's the and problem. that's where it's not fair. Tifu is, that's the, his fault. He literally gathered everyone and For was like, sure. this is a fight. We have to fight together. For Why sure. would he do that? 100. Nobody should have started this. Tifu shouldn't have started it. FaZe Banks definitely should not have made it personal, responding to it at all. He's a businessman. This is supposed to be about business, keep your personal relationships to yourself and keep it out of it. He literally was tweeting to people saying yeah. that like FaZe is good for him, he should stay with FaZe. It's not up to you to decide who should stay with your org. Yes, you gave him a big leg up, you gave him a massive head start because you signed him. That's amazing, but you can't control people. Whoa, you can't control whoa. what they do. But don't forget the fact that they have, as an org, tried to give him a raise. They've like given him more yes. money as he's grown bigger. So it's for not sure. like they're trying to keep him to the contract but that Lisa, they signed years ago. I would never, if I, if you, I signed you to my org, I would never think to myself, well, like, oh, I gave her her start. She has to stay with me forever now. She owes it to me. That is a messed up, messed up relationship mentality. It's up to you. It's an abusive it's you. relationship. It's abusive. Yes. It's completely abusive. But I want you to soar. I want you to fly. FaZe Bank should feel the same way about Tifu. Even if he started this drama, whatever, be the bigger man. Let him go. Let him soar. If he fails, that's on him, not on you anymore. All right, there you go. Uh, moving on, one of Dota's biggest players is taking a hardline stance against racism. This week, one of OG's players, Seb, made racist remarks against Russians in a pub game. Seb apologized for the remarks later, but that wasn't enough for Virtus Pro Solo, who is Russian himself. Solo said that he would not be playing in the upcoming Epicenter Major unless Valve addresses the situation and bans Seb. Mm. Okay, uh, do you think Valve should step in and impose some sort of punishment? Marissa, this is um, kind of a big... It's, it's tough because, like, you... <sighs> Yeah, it, it's it's messed up because this is affecting a player, and it, yes. and this is uh, obviously upsetting to him. And so when it comes to anybody's, uh, not even just like integrity, the race, the religion, anything that gets put down in some way when yeah. you're dealing with professionals and you're trying to be professional and dealing mm -hmm. with a professional league, this needs to be taken care of and taken yeah. care of immediately. It's yeah. not okay that we live in a society that still thinks it's okay to discuss certain things and make certain comments even when they're playing online, if it's yeah. just like a pub or whatever it is. We can't be this way as humans. We a can't lot of be this way in society. people are defending this because they're like, this is how Dota players talk. It's just the way, like it's very casual. People say horrible things like that all the time. It's normal, but they know it's all in jest. But is that now in this kind of day and age a good enough defense anymore? It's not. Especially it, since he's a pro. Like, are we really exactly. making excuses for him here? Right, because we have to think about how many kids look up to these guys. Yeah. How many kids that are just like, yeah, this is where we go online and we're playing these games online and we hear all these terrible things and they're insulting to so many people. Like, we have to be more sensitive and 
and I know everyone's like talking about snowflakes and how we're all just too sensitive. And you know what? That is the case for some things, for sure. Maybe we are hypersensitive now, but we have to think about others and empathize with others and how these words might actually affect them in their day to day. Here's the thing. Valve has always taken a very like, uh, they step back, right? They don't Alexis. try to, exactly. They don't really try to impose much. But now the question is, this is this a situation where they should impose? Mm. Because there's been situations in Dota in the past where, you know, a player would say something like of the same lines and Valve would just like find them, you know, like very yeah. loose like punishments, right? Mm. Do they need to take a harder stance and punish people for saying racist things 100. On, on, in the game? 100. There's a lot of reform that needs to happen here with all this stuff. We just need to make sure that players feel safe, they feel comfortable, and they feel happy. Like this is, again, supposed to be a professional league. Let's all be yeah. professional here. That's it. I wonder if the team Virtus Pro, like Solo, who's standing <sighs> up against this, is actually like, did he ask the team, can he not play in the next yeah. major? Because this is not just affecting him, right? Mm. This affects the whole team. If he's not playing, the team has to find a new replacement. Yeah. This affects the whole scene. So Absolutely. it's really brave that he is taking it upon himself. For sure. Because then to people are just going to be all over him. Exactly. Too. Like you're, you know that people are adding him, just yeah. telling him not to be so sensitive. Like he's got to deal with all that as well. So for him to be brave and come forward, that says something yeah. as well to his character. We got to move on. Right. Over in Rainbow Six Siege, a former Black Dragon analyst is accusing the team of conspiring with FaZe Clan to fix matches. God. FaZe Clan. The <laughs> allegations, which are backed by potential evidence, say that Black Dragon player coordinated with a member of FaZe Clan to throw matches to help each other. Ubisoft has yet to comment on the accusations, though Black Dragon did suspend the accused player. Lisa, yes. what do you think is the appropriate punishment for a match, for this match fixing? And I'm really triggered that FaZe Clan is part of this. Yeah, once again, they can't seem to stay out of it, can mm. they? Um, I mean, it's good that he's suspended for now because they're mm. still investigating, but yeah. once it's, you know, done and it's found true, I think lifetime ban. Like, like I think ben. for from esports, like from the esports side, you cannot yeah. compete and do this kind of thing. This completely ruins the integrity of the sport mm. and cannot be accepted in any way. Because mm -hmm. once a cheater, always a cheater. You know that's the line. But like yeah. this is mm -hmm. a thing that you cannot allow to pass. You have to be strict on this one at least. Yeah, I think this is just like an overall reflection, especially because like Face Clan is a part of this. But an overall reflection of the fact that esports is still so young. Yes, there's so much growing up that needs to happen there. I mean, and we're even talking about an esports bubble here as well because so many people from the outside are taking advantage of the fact that there's not a lot of reform here. Yeah. there's not a lot of just things that need to be fixed like yeah. this. There's so much of it. That, and the fact that we're talking about all of it today, like, yeah, there's a lot of drama, of course, like, Friday, when the weekend comes, like, you know, the drama's gonna oh, roll fire. in. And that's the thing, like, we do love esports because there is so much drama and all this stuff is aired on Twitter. Yes. And we get to talk about this openly, but there's so much of this stuff that needs to be reformed because we're supposed to be professionals here. And we yes. want the world to look at us as professionals in the broadcast side, in the player side, and the org side. We need to just clean it up all around. So yes, I agree with you, Aban. This brings light on a certain region because this is Latin America right mm. so I think this is interesting this is coming out now because obviously Latin America is a smaller region in terms of you know many esports and this really sheds light that in smaller regions there's these things happening and mm. maybe they feel like they can get away with it more yeah because like you know they can sweep it under the rug not many eyes are on it yeah. so this is kind of shining a light on this region and maybe other regions that are similar mm. that they can't get away with this anymore either like this mm. is the kind of stuff that will be revealed and this honestly hurts your region at the yeah. end of the day you don't want to be known as a region that cheats at the end of the day, and right? No, absolutely. Okay. Like you can't. Uh, you're supposed to be professionals here. Don't, <laughs> don't cheat, man. Okay, don't Marissa. freaking cheat. We got what? Marissa, simmer, simmer. Because mm. there's more drama. Mm. Oh, Ready? God. All right. Apex Legends players are in revolt over the game's microtransactions. Specifically, how much they cost? Because they cost way too much. Mm. Fans on the game subreddits are trying to organize a protest against the cost of the game's in-game skins, which have an average cost of 18 U.S. dollars. Those same fans argue that this is one of the reasons why Apex has seen lower revenue, because they're business majors, obviously. In the end, the protest aims to do two things. Lower the cost of skins and increase the number of skins available on the market. Mm. And I'm sure to increase the quality as well. So this is interesting that, you know, the public itself, finally, the players are like gathering together, hosting a protest. Do you think <laughs> it's going to be successful? Uh, mm? uh, it's, <laughs> it's tough to say because EA is also attached to this, okay? Yes. So um, I, I just feel like for the most part, gamers especially tend to revolt against a publisher that they've already revolted against, yes. right? Because they look for uh, flaws in their system and that's exactly what they're doing here as well. Um, they've got to make up a lot of money now. Apex mm -hmm. and Respawn and EA have to make up a lot of money now for all of this free play that we've all been enjoying for Ooh. this whole time, right? So they've got to they got to make that money now. So they got to sell these skins. Hold on, hold on. are you saying that the players 
ask for this. Like, if you're asking for free play, this is kind of what you get. Uh, I, I'm not saying the players ask for it, like but I also think it. that if we're enjoying a premium product, yeah. we have to pay, Ooh. right? So uh, if you want to keep enjoying this premium product, but again, you don't have to buy these skins. It's not something that you need to do, but they need to make up the revenue for the people that aren't buying the skins and are yes. playing for free. So if you're a skin fiend, <laughs> if you want to be that person, then you, you got you you to pony up. This is their game. They can charge I think they that's want. the issue. I think they have money. Like, players have money that they want to spend, yeah. but the skins itself are not good, and mm. they want better skins. That's part okay. of it, right? They want higher quality skins. They're like, guys, put some effort to it, into it, yeah. you know, EA and Respawn. Like, mm. they're not even trying. So this is them venting, and they're frustrated. They want higher quality stuff, which I'm kind of for. Like, you know what? I'm really proud. I don't know if proud is the right word. Happy that people are actually stepping up and I, for sure. forward I, I, I love that, you know, where gamers express their opinions, and I love that um, a lot of the time developers do hear them, but yeah. understand they get a lot of opinions coming their way constantly. So they have to, like, kind of manage all of it and realize what is actually best for their company, best for their employees, and then best for their game, which in turn is best for the gamers playing them. So yes, sure. maybe they can Im improve their skins, absolutely, and that will come with time, but I don't like the raising pitchforks things. It's not really my cup of tea. It's in our power now. Okay, it's time to check in with the streamers in Clip It. Okay, our first clip comes from Greek God X, <laughs> who discovered that he had a very popular fan. Okay, go to right there, Anthony Grimms. Cool. That's what I watch. But then, but then it gets a little late. Okay, it gets a little late. It gets like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And I'm like, oh, sh you know what? I bet you Greek's on. I go over to Just Chatting, and guess who I find? A Greek. And I love it. He is. Oh! Now what? Now what? I don't know what to do! If Shroud loves me, he loves you. <laughs> what a perfect response, although he needs better lighting. I was just going to say, maybe he can now afford some lighting for his stream <laughs> if Shroud's given him some love. He just uh, likes the theater mode for all of us. That was cute, though. I'm so, really that's sweet. so sweet that Shroud is giving support. He's done this a lot, right? Giving yeah. support to, like, smaller streamers. And it's really cute, that reaction. Um, I want to know, who would you fangirl over if you caught them either creeping your Twitter or Instagram or Switch, which you never stream anyways, but whatever. I uh, <laughs> I think I think Pokey. I would really yes! fangirl if it were Pokey. Um, just, like, even if she like watched our show and just like enjoyed it a little bit. She did give us a little a little love. I was when we were say, talking about her when we were talking about wigs a little bit. Last, she did inspire last us. Week, I mean, not last week, last year. I think I tweeted out something yeah. about our show. Yeah. And Pokey and I tagged Pokey and she actually liked I it. I was actually on the toilet when that happened, <laughs> so it was a big deal. Like I was like, oh, she read it. She posted. She was. She was in the me. right location. Right location for this. I think Pokey <laughs> would appreciate me saying that. By the way, she seems real. Yeah, uh, of course. Right. Um, One hundred. Yeah. Her. I mean, her. Fangirl. Any of the. I, like it's, I, of course we want like Shroud, amazing too. Love our good Canadian boy Shroud. But I do love. There's something about um, women supporting other women yes. uh, that really brings me joy and gives me life because you know we're 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 raised to, uh, for some reason, compete with one another and um, you know try to best one another and put each other down. So um, when women do the opposite of that, Marissa. it really lifts me up. So I would never. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to the next thing because <laughs> Ms. Kith tried to enjoy a romantic dinner and then another romantic interest, Maya Higa, showed up in chat. Get out of my house. Have you ever heard of Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome? No, but I've heard of Stockades. I don't know if that's works. I mean, I have some nine-month subs that I want to ban right now. If you keep drinking wine, then you... Oh, if I... Yeah, okay, that's true. If I keep drinking, chat, maybe I could tolerate her. Wait, she's here? Uh... 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 Maya, it's, it's, it's not what it looks like. I was just, um, this is, my, it's, we're taste testing for when you come here. We're just excited that you're going to show up. That's, that's it. 
Eek. Ooh. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it seems like awkward. A I was going to say, it felt a little scripted, yeah. but that's still pretty awkward if you think about it. So you're on like a date with someone, and then another person you're seeing pops up and watches it. But why are you streaming it if that's the whole deal? Like, why? Yeah, that's that's what I mean. It's got to be staged, right? Because even like she knew about it, and she kind of like grabbed her plate and was like, okay, bye, like one of those. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just be, eh. It's okay. We've had a lot of miskip though lately, which means he's doing something right, and he sure. has, you know, he's got a lot of pogger things happening, and we're all enjoying. Does so he, Is he just not like Tyler 1? A little Do you bit. not just look like Tyler One and actually yeah, Tyler bit. One? Do we just love our Tyler Ones? Like, can we get over <laughs> this we kind just, of stuff? We just kind of love the meme triggery yeah. streamers. I mean, I love them and hate them at the mm. same time because they're so great at what they do, but it's also like, it's a lot of negativity that could be associated with them. So I'd like to stay away from that. Because again, I want this community to just mature, okay? We okay. can do this together, people. It really is the best time of day where we scroll the Twitters <laughs> to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. We especially love it when they remind us that we're all the same. So, Octane Tweets, once you move out of your parents' house, getting the mail becomes something I never knew I hated so much. Mm, okay, I feel this, but I, just to clarify, we'll he definitely means bills and government documents because who doesn't love a nice package in the mail? Am I right, ladies? What? Marissa? What? It's a family show. What? I love getting packages in the mail. Then why did you wink so much? Because I like shopping. <laughs> That's true, I like it when you shop too. <laughs> because she gives me stuff that she doesn't end up wearing. It's true, I got that. I'm like, this is more Elisa. This is thing. actually one of hers right there. <laughs> um, but that's real, real talk right yeah. there. Like, um, you know when you grow up and you have to move away from your parents? Yeah. I really felt that recently because I got sick. And, know, you know, mama. mommy usually cooks you soup. I know. But I had to eat out of, a, like, a can, you know, I just microwave chicken noodle soup I'm or whatever. Like she had to eat. She's also an adult and is perfectly capable of making her own soup from sick. scratch, but she decided not to do that. No. Take pity on me, okay? For I, once. I don't take pity on you because you could have just taken vitamins, like I recommended, <gasps> several times okay. instead of taking drugstore over-the-counter stuff. Okay, Real, thanks. Okay, this isn't Elisa Rose. Let's move on. Okay. okay. <laughs> Our next profound thought is from Sir Action Slacks himself, who teaches us all the things video games teach us all. Yeah. <laughs> that was eloquent. All right, he says, they say video games aren't useful, but they really are. For example, I know my wife wants me to do something in order to progress, but I have gone through all the dialogue trees. Then it hit me that maybe I need to do a side quest, like doing the dishes, and it will unlock more options later. Ah, yeah. uh, smart man, acts of service, achievement unlocked. That's right, baby. Uh, so smart. Again, active service is very important, everybody. Um, especially, like, I just, I love it when my man washes the dishes. There you and go. I come home and it's just like a clean kitchen. And then, you know what? Maybe we can have a little fun later because I'm just excited. But the fact that the kitchen is friggin' clean. This stuff works options every unlocked, time. Huh? What o options, options are unlocked? Unlock. This is the thing. You unlock dialogue trees within <laughs> your own relationship. Like, do things. Think about your significant other. Think about the things that they might enjoy you doing with and, like, surprise them with it. That's so nice. I bet you his wife loved that. Gave him a little appreciation. I'm gonna wink like she's doing. Okay. I don't know what she's doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our last profound thought is from a recent Melee champ, Mango, who reminds us how uh, dang good it feels to be a gangster. I've been drunk for 100 <laughs> hours straight. Melee community, if you love me, don't ever let me win again. I'm dying over here. Dies. <laughs> what are you talking about? I feel like a gangster every day. Oh, yeah. is that right? No. No, I, I'm like happy for him, but like legitimately sad for me because I will never know that kind of euphoria. What do you mean? Like to, being to a pro? Be, yeah, to be a pro and to be top of your game. There's, there's no way I'll ever experience that kind of euphoria. Like, imagine imagine winning a tournament, going head to head on a stage. At Gama was so lit. The crowd was so hype. How to have, to have all that and no crabs thrown at you? I mean... <sighs> That's Hi. good. That must feel good. Uh, Marissa, you've made top 10 in Tetris in Tetris before. So, like, if you want, we will stand around you and cheer for you and not throw crabs or throw Aww. crabs. Whatever you want. We'll do it for you. We want you to feel happy. I want crabs. You want crabs? Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to some crowd control. This is where we showcase some of the great gaming stuff the community has been making or talking about. Are you ready for the next step of realistic graphics? Mm -hmm. Electronic Arts released this clip showing how its game engine, Frostbite, is upping its game in the hair animation department.
know what? Uh, that was a little trippy. Was first it? of all, yeah, the, the the sweeping back kick or whatever we would call that. Was it a windmill kick? Um, You're an expert. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm not a master of martial arts. I'm sure Tyler. Tyler, why haven't you chimed in yet to let me know? Because he is a master of jujitsu, is he not? Uh, something like that, karate, whatever. I'm ignorant. Um, I'm actually. You like talk about it all the time. I was, sh I was shook. <laughs> Brazilian jujitsu. Okay, I was there. There you go. Um, I was shook at how amazing the fine quality of that hair. Yeah. Like that's the next step for like hair product uh, commercials right there because yeah. that was beautiful I guess hair products in game like we'll see it now apply yes. to if Activision will take it or Rockstar will take it on and apply it to like the RPG version <laughs> of um, Grand Theft Auto and then we'll have like full-on hair commercials like how shiny like certain shampoos make your hair right? over others yeah yeah I'm revolutionary I'm, I'm all in on this uh, sure. looking spice but also it's kind of rude to like you know people that don't have that shining lustrous hair yeah um, to have it in game like that it's unrealistic expectations okay so Moving on, let's take a look at something else that is equally as cool, but definitely less advanced. Introduced by Reddit user Idea for Granted, we bring you the next PUBG mobile console. Ooh. Hey, no scope? No problem. Now you can get those pan kills without having to squint an eye. Also, these handy tabs make it easy to spam your shots. Your enemies will never see it coming. Oh, look at that. That's sweet. I'm sold. You oh, sold it for me. Let's yeah. go. Get him. I love it. That's actually ridiculous. Where did they even find that piece? Somebody, Where did they even find that? No, this is just the brilliance of community. Like, they, you want it, you got it. Okay, as, Ariana as Grande. As Ariana. Hey, I heard that. Um, I'm actually, I was worried about humanity before, but now I'm not anymore. Because oh. obviously we're very resourceful. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we put our minds to it, we can really get creative. That's true, but right? this is like gonna hurt the competitive scene for PUBG Mobile if somebody has this and then nobody can actually tell that they have, they have it and then they're going in and competing and it's not fair. What competitive scene? There is! It's not a thing, all right? It's not a thing. I would have muted, I would have muted you if I didn't already use it. Oh. All right, it's time to move on to our last post. Remember the good old days of AOL and MSN? You might be too young, who knows? Well, don't fret, because we still got Minecraft chat logs. Mm. So here's an excerpt from a conversation between Miss Summer Daisy 123 and Spider Dude 1234. Marissa, why don't you help me read this one, all right? Okay. Okay. Please say 123 if you want some of this. 123, wow. So, you want to be my boyfriend, Spider Dude 1234? Ma be. What? Nah. Why? I'm in an intimate relationship with my PC. Really? Yeah, for real. She my bae. Rip. How Ooh. was that? That was pretty good. That I was like a great theater. Videos. It's like we do that already for professional reasons or yeah, something. Yeah, no, but like more of that <laughs> stuff, that's fun. That was fun? You like that? Yeah, yeah, like If you guys want to see more of that, <laughs> let us know in chat because we had a lot of fun there. We'll do a Patreon like top tier. Marissa and Lisa just talk over internet Minecraft things. logs. <laughs> just send us your Minecraft logs and we'll read them in our catfish voice. Because, well, you know, not mine. That was her I catfish like voice. That's not, I mean, that's more like my anime voice. Like if we could do maybe a little, a little <gasps> anime satin. short. Yeah. That'd be really fun. Let's okay. do it. Goals from us <laughs> right here. Listen, if that is it for me to remember, you can always hit us up on our socials just to say hi or send us stuff you want us to react to. Simon type in exclamation mark socials right now so you know where to find us, and we'll see you next time.